Hey there, comic book fans. I am back from the comic shop from another for another week. It is a dark and dreary night out there. Lots of mist in the air. It was a it was a spooky ride home from the comic shop. And sometimes you couldn't see very far ahead because of the mist. But anyway, I've got uh, four new comics this week. Uh, one from the pull list. Two true believers, which are actually on the pull list, but you have to put them on individually. So. And uh, I pulled something off the shelf this week. But let's start with the Comic Shop News. Always fun to get the freebie, the Comic Shop News, with the Spider-Man comic strip on it. Though I noticed, I think the last issue, instead of having six comic strips, had seven. I'm like, aren't there six comic strips a week? And a, so, let's see how many this has. And the back's got one, two, three, four, five for Monday through Friday. And then, then they put si six... Seven, eight. There's eight Spider Man. They must, I don't know how they run these, but there's eight Spider Man strips in this one. I always enjoy reading the Spider Man strips, and there's Spencer and Locke, whoever that is. Who puts this one out? Oh, it's a clever riff on Calvin and Hobbes. I don't need a clever riff on Calvin and Hobbes. You're not going to be as clever as Calvin and Hobbes, so. Um, Amazing Spider-Man 252 Facsimile Edition. Dun, dun, dun. Those reprints were a dollar and not four dollars. I'd get them. The facsimile editions are four dollars. The True Believers are uh, one dollar. I'd like one dollar on a whim. Stuff coming out. Peter Cannon, Thunderbolt. There you go. Comic Shop News. All the news that's fit to print about comics. Let's see, our first True Believers edition is a Marvel team-up reprint. Spider-Man and Cap and Ms. Marvel. Uh, Burn and Claremont. I bet I, I bought this once when, when it came off the stands. I bet I still have it on my shelf. So I have I don't have all of my uh, I don't have all of my Marvel team-ups because I didn't like the later ones, but I kept all the Burn and Claremont stuff, but I wanted a nice new printing of it. Look how white and shiny that is. So, uh, I don't remember a thing about this story. Except, like I said, I, if it's Burn and Claremont, I probably liked it from, uh, what was this, the late 70s? Let's see if it gives us, does it give us an issue number of Marvel Team Up? Marvel Team Up 62. Okay. I am sure I'm going to enjoy this one. I hope I've been enjoying these True Believers. The other one I got is Ms. Marvel, number one. I haven't read this one. I, I used to have it. Got rid of all my Ms. Marvels years ago because they're really kind of mediocre. This is a kind of an example of mediocre late 70s Marvel. Jerry Conway, John Buscema, Joe Sinnott. I'm sure it'll be okay. I think I... I think this was reprinted in the superhero women too which i have on my shelf since i've had since my childhood but haven't read it some nice job you some art like i said i i was never a big fan of this series in general the run of ms marvel but i don't even remember who i don't remember john Bus if john buscema drew it or someone they said at least he drew the first issue so you can't go wrong with john buscema in general but uh, for a dollar I'll give it a look. Then, of course, we get The Walking Dead. What issue number we got here? 188. This is the one. This is a. Uh, oh, there's the princess all the way back there. She's the new character. She's supposed to be leaving this uh, place they found. I forget the name of it. But oh, we, got, we left a little bit of cliffhanger of this guy in trouble. Don't want to turn too many pages and give it away, but uh, Walking Dead's been good. They found a new settlement that's even bigger than them that takes a couple days to travel to, and shocking things happened, and now they're, they're trying to, you know, because this settlement there's unrest in because there's not a real merit-based system going on there. So uh, always, always a good read, 188 issues later, and I'm still buying it. Love it. And here's the thing I picked up off the shelf. I don't know. I just know I had what four dollars, six dollars worth of stuff. So I was looking around for something else, and this was actually six dollars. It's oversized. Uh, I wonder how many pages it is. It doesn't give us a page number. 
40 pages, 48 pages maybe. Uh, Elizabeth Dumb, D-U-M-N, is a strong, rebellious girl determined to make her own way. Good thing, too, because her father long ago promised her to the devil, and he's come to claim what's his. Part horror adventure, part surreal dreamscape, this original graphic novel features the amazing artwork of new Brazilian sensation Arabson Assis. It's a story that will haunt you long after you've turned the final page. So, <coughs> pardon me, caught my eye. Uh, I opened it up. I kind of liked the artwork. The terrible Elizabeth Dunn against the devil in suits. It uh, just sort of, here's some random fighting going on. Just sort of it reminded me of, um, oh, what was that? Jeff Darrow. Uh, boop, 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 the Shaolin. Oh, all of a sudden I forgot the name. That's Jeff Darrow series. That's the, the Shaolin something. That's all about violence. And um, I'm not quite down 100% with that Jeff Darrow series. I like it. But I'm not. Jeez, the, Sha oh, the Shaolin monk? Is that the name of it? Ah, wish I could remember. Someone out there is shouting it at me right now if it's the Shaolin the monk or not. But it reminded me of that in a way. And. Only six dollars when I, you know, only had six dollars worth of. St the only thing that bothers me about it, I, it, it got ding. I got a copy that's dinged up there. This little ding in the corner, which you know, is annoying. But uh, sometimes with these oversized, you know, not mainstream stuff, you, they get they don't get handled as well by Diamond or whoever. This also came out back in. Where's where's the month on it? It said uh, no, somewhere. It said November twenty eighteen. Uh, 2018. So it, I don't think it came out this week. Where did? At least I thought I saw a date on it. No, no, November 2018. I I don't know if it just showed up in the comic shop this week, but it just got into my line of vision this week, and I was looking for something. So um, so I picked it up. There you go. One other thing I wanted to tell you, the the comic that I got last week, the actual Roger, I really liked. So it's uh number one in a five issue limited series so i put the other four issues on my pull list but i was actually surprised i liked it kind of bought it on a lark once again last week i didn't have uh, much on my pull list so i just saw this here and kind of liked the artwork uh but i ended up really enjoying the story the story about these two kids here who get superpowers it's kind of i think it says all ages on it uh superhero humor rated e for everyone uh, and, and it was just a good story. The uh, Whoever this guy was his name from the director of the Tick animated series, Hank Tucker, did a nice job with this on the art. The, his storytelling is very good. His characters were good, I think pretty well-rounded. And I'm, it surprised me that I liked it. And, and what's funny about it, too, is I can't tell if it's intentional or not, but there is so much in here that the printing is off register and but it's like if you look at how this blue bleeds up top right there over that panel and there's all sorts of strange stuff like that but it doesn't look like it i don't know if it was a stylistic choice but also it reminds me of a 1980s indie comic if you look at the coloring there's a because the, it doesn't look i'm sure it was computer colored but it doesn't look like computer color it looks like what happened in indie comics in the 80s, because they wanted to put them out cheaper, they didn't have color separations done. They shot right from wherever they colored it from. Uh, it's kind of a technical thing, but it made the stuff look like weird watercolor a lot of the time. And that's kind of what this does. There's hardly, a, if you, I, like I said, I know it was done on a computer. If you look at that harsh edge shadow there, there's hardly any harsh edge shadows in here. There's all sort of just blurry watercolor shadows that don't really even mean any. Like if you look at this, this one kid turns into clay. That's he develops that superpower, and there's just kind of random shadows in there. Like he was, you know, hitting it up with watercolor. Same with this here he is over here. Look at those weird random shadows. So it was really reminding me of a 1980s indie comic. I was I was reading it, and the kids, you know, the the government gets involved. He's a government helicopter. There's jokes in it. There's humor. 
it's I, I must say I was I was very impressed by it and put it on my pull list. So actual Roger, I'll be getting and for the next four issues it'll be a dollar fifteen issues. So six dollars for four issues? Why not? All right. I've been working on a photograph all week. And I'm not done with it. It's taken a whole lot of time. So I figured I'd uh, show you an old print I got. This is from 2007. This is one of the prints I do. So this is drawn drawn in India ink, scanned in, and then colored on the computer. And these, uh, these gears were all made on the computer, too. So... Just different layers of blue, and uh, of course the type, I love your sense of smell, is also uh, done on the computer. But this is, I did these a lot in the, I did about a hundred of them in the, and back in the aughts, the 2000 aughts there. Uh, different, different type prints, different than my painted lady drawings, all sorts of, uh, all sorts of different type prints, uh, but that that's just one of them. I always like that one. I like that color blue. Uh, and uh, I also like, hold on, let me just, I just do these nice designs in the lips. Look at those. That takes a remarkable amount, of, takes a remarkable amount of time to do those lips. I just, that just popped into my head because I don't make them anymore. Oh, the phone's ringing. So uh, you guys all have a good week out there.